okay presentation. We do this every single year, but it is something that is important to everyone. I want to remind those who are viewing on video that this is going out to the sales reps. It is also going to our Portland facility, and the Portland facility is slightly different than the plan that we have here in that we do not have a match of the 401k at the Portland facility, but we do have that for the Kentucky facility. So whenever we go over that information on the matching, that does not currently apply to the Portland facility. With that, I am going to basically just state we need to all be conscious of what this 401k does for us. If we think about what our parents had or whatever, they may have had a defined benefit plan to where they got so much per month in their retirement. We don't have that. It is up to you to save all the monies you can for your retirement. This is a defined contribution plan. You determine what goes into your retirement savings plan. Okay, you have to do that through salary reduction contributions. And the company does have a matching program. I'll let Wayne go ahead and mention that. But when we look at the entire plan that we have here, I can tell you, I get to see all the information. We as a group are not saving enough. For all the employees out there, what people are saving, it's probably not going to cover your future you know, living expenses. I'm hoping you have a spouse or someone else who's making contributions into a plan that they have to help because as a group, I can tell you we are falling <coughs> shy of that. So I'm going to turn it over to Wayne Cornwell. He's with PNC. PNC is the company that administers our plan. We look at this every single year. There is a committee that we have that determines what investment options that we have. We have like 24 different investment options you can put your monies into. That's going to be a focus as well. Putting money into the plan is great, but how you invest it is important as well. So again, Wayne is going to go over some of those things. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Wayne. Well, thank you. So it's going to be back here again. Um, I'm eventually going to retire, okay? I'm working because my wife lives to be 100. I'm going to get her there because she has a good wife. That's what's very good. Um, turns out that uh, we're just going to talk about basic investing overview, in part because of what Tom said. The reason is when you look at the different graphics, okay, most people haven't had money deposited good okay for a couple of years after retirement, but after that, you know, we don't know your, the rest of your status, but what's inside the 401k is really, really small. So we've got to talk about, you know, how we can change that. So part of the investing thing is, you know, why invest in the 401k, compounding, all these things. So there's some hidden things in there that I think will help everybody, and I, it's really, a, you know, it's just really kind of neat. So I won't read you the agenda, but I just want to make sure you kind of see what we're going to talk about today. And then, you think about it, okay, so, so we have all this right here so you can do pre- or post-tax contributions. We'll talk about that because one of the things inside here is called the Roth, okay? You get a wide investment investment choice, you get a discretionary match. So a lot of reasons why you should be in the plan. At the end of the day, we're all going to get older, okay? I used to be the age of that guy right there, okay? And, um, you know, so when you think about it, you know, that was a long, long time ago. And so what happens is you get older, you just say, how are you going to finance your retirement? So we're going to help you understand the basics. So here's some of the reasons why you should invest in the 401k. The first one is very convenient. How many, how many people are new to the company? How many people are new? Okay. So how many people have not ever been in a 401k before? Okay. okay. We'll kind of make it real simple, but it, it's a convenient way to do it so you can pay yourself first. Okay. Yeah. So to pay, uh, you know, pay yourself first. And the money compounds. I mean, compounding is probably one of the greatest force. Okay. Einstein called it, the, I think he called it the eighth greatest um, wonder in the world was compounding. We'll talk a little bit about that because to me, that's really, really strategic, okay? And matching on a discretionary basis, they'll match 100% of the first one and 50% of the next two you contribute. That's a big deal. It's still free money. How many of you got kids? Or they're growing up and kids, okay? Yeah. You got kids? Well, the deal is, I mean, kids like your money or their money. Your money. It's called other people's money. So that's the deal. So think about that. It's also portable. If you leave the company, you can take it with you. So that's what four, how 401ks are set up. But everybody's wants to retire, but nobody wants to save any money. But you've seen this slide before, most of you, but everybody's really nervous about Social Security. I, for one, didn't think they were going to mess with Social Security much, but they already started. Three weeks ago, President Obama signed something into law that's going to change how married couples, uh, how much they can get from Social Security based on their spouse, and also if you're divorced, how much you get from your ex-spouse. So that's starting to change. And so be very careful about this. Women live longer than men. How many people are married in here? How many people? Okay, so if you, you know, if you're a woman, you're going to think, well, you may outlive your husband. And so remember, if your husband passes away, it's a double loss, okay? You lose your spouse, and then you lose the higher of the two social 
you lose the lower of the two social security payments coming into the house. And so it's really a, a double loss. So a lot of people um, may be a widow for five, six, or more years. My mother was a widow for 35 years. She was a widow at, at, at 70, uh, I mean at 44. So, and healthcare costs are going up, we'll talk about that. But the other thing that people don't think about, they tax you in social security. You don't know what your tax structure is gonna be. So at the end of the day, you still gotta figure out how do you go ahead and save enough um, to go ahead and retire. There's a study out there that Aon Hewitt called the Real Deal Study. They studied 2.1 million people, and here's what they found out. Only one out of five have, are projected to have enough to meet their retirement needs, one out of five. Another one out of five, if they can adjust their lifestyle, like maybe you don't gotta eat as much, you get rid of a car, maybe you downsize or whatever, they can probably make it. That means about 60% are probably not gonna make it in retirement. And so it's pretty sad. So a lot of people are gonna be living with their kids, okay? People say, well, that's ridiculous. Well, let me tell you what. The other day I ran into a 25-year-old kid who said that he was going broke because his dad was living with him. He said, it's my house, my rules now, but you know, I'm the kid and he's the dad, but he's living with me and he has no money, no job, no nothing, okay? So we start to see that happen again. Another guy told me, there are two people tell me in the last two months that their parents moved back in. I said, how old are your parents? And both of the parents are in their middle 50s. They lost their job, they had no income, they had no 401k, they were broke. So we may chuckle at that, but that's probably gonna happen. So take the care of the holidays with your family, really make sure you enjoy it, because you may be living if you don't save enough money, for real, okay? So here's the other thing, okay? The median employee income is expected to be financially ready to retire at 65, so at 68. It used to be 65 was considered the retirement age. Now people think it's gonna be like, it's gonna be like age 68. So that means you're probably gonna have to work a little bit longer, save a little bit more. Everybody asks me, they say, Wayne, how much do I need to save to retire okay? And so I never knew the answer to that because I don't know how much you spend, okay? A guy the other day came in and wanted me to help get control of his wife. I said, why? So we spent too much money. They spend $22,000 a year going out here. 22,000. Wow. I said, you kidding me? I said, well, sir, you're half the problem because you eat half the food, you drink half the booze, you know, which is true. But it says, in your what it says here, to live the same lifestyle in your 30s, you need about 40% of your annual income saved up. So, so basically what that's saying is, if, if you're making like $30,000, um, 40% would be about $12,000 you need that saved. In your 40s, if you're making $30,000, you probably need to have about $60,000 saved. In your 50s, if, you know, you need about four times that, so you need to have somewhere 120 dollars saved, and in your 60s, probably about nine years. So compounding has to really kick in. And when you retire, you need about 11 years income. So if you're making 30,000 a year, 11 times 30 is like $330,000. But it's a template to go ahead and use. And part of it's gonna be based on Social Security, depends on whether your spouse has a pension or whether the other income sources. But that's, I want to show that because a lot of people say, what do I need to say? And I'm telling you, when you look at the demographics in this company, people are way, way behind. I'd say the vast majority of people, 40%, it doesn't matter what, whether they're 30, 40, or in the 50, you understand. Most of the age groups are way behind as far as safety, but it's very, very scary. Okay. It's all time, we have a crisis. And so that's why we have a contribution change form um, on the desk for everybody to go ahead and, and, and fill out. But here's the other thing. Now, the trouble is this can be very depressing, but I think you gotta know the facts because you still gotta say whether we like them or not, we get older, okay? And it says the average couple out-of-pocket healthcare costs. It's out-of-pocket. Not just what your bill's gonna be, but just what you're gonna pay out-of-pocket is $245,000 as a couple. So let's figure your single, it's probably gonna be about what, 122,500 uh, bucks is what it's gonna be. And notice it says in the blue there, it says 60% is gonna come from Medicare. When you retire, Medicare is your insurance. Medicare is gonna cover 60% of it. So you have to buy some kind of supplement or something, but it's gonna cost you money. I know an old guy, he's a terrific old guy, he's like 96, and for years he's been driving back and forth to Florida. You know, and he's great help. He looks like he stepped out of the cab. He's got great genetic makeup, okay? Well, the deal is that he told me the other day that he's, this year he's definitely paying a lot more out of his pocket than he ever did before because Medicare's slowly changing the rules, folks. And wait, how many of you get parents that, that are receiving Medicare? I mean, if you do, yeah. So they're starting to change the rules. And the trouble is when you get older, sometimes it's harder to understand all the choices. I mean, it's confusing to me, and I kind of study it. So I just want to share that with you. Here's another thing to think about. Social Security published this thing, and they said, hey, by the way, 35% of your income when you retire is probably gonna come from Social Security. Now, how many of you think you'll see Social Security? Okay, okay. so, you know, I'm up there, so, you know, obviously I will, but the deal is a lot of you think they want to save, so you gotta plan accordingly. If you look at how much you get saved, you gotta say, I'm, I'm really behind. Most people are really behind, 
and they don't think they're going to see search period, so there's a crisis coming. The government's really worried about it, et cetera. But then it says 34% is going to come from earned income. What that means is they think you're going to be working, okay? A lot of people do work part-time. The problem is a lot of people find it's hard to get <coughs> you know, once, once you reach retirement age. So people truly are worried about running out of money. But this is where they say the sources of income are going to come. And the rest is going to come from your 401k. Okay, so that's how it's going to get in. You can find the money. Okay, there's some ways to find the money. You know, soft drinks, lotteries, uh, people smoke or whatever. But, you know, Starbucks, you know, right here, that's, you know, that's how much that'd be over 30 years, like $64,000 of Starbucks. Now, we now have Starbucks in our bank. They moved out to a little convenience shop, and now Starbucks is right there. And I'm convinced they're going to change the name of Starbucks. Are you familiar with that? Change the name of five bucks. So if you walk in there, it's five bucks. Okay? So think about it. Okay? Lottery tickets. I don't know if I told you about my sister. She played the same numbers every year, told her how much money she was throwing away. She reminded me of a little known fact that she used to beat me up on the red paper because she was older. She said, if I stop playing the numbers you know, that I played for 40 years and they come up the next week and I lose, okay, I'm coming after you. In fact, I'm going to kill you. Okay? That's what she told me. I like that. Okay? You know, the other thing is a lot of people don't maximize the match. Okay? This is really, uh, you leave free money on the table because you, you know, otherwise you're going to be underfunded for retirement. So this is a really, really big deal. Okay? So that's the money on the table. So the smartest thing you do is take advantage of the match. There's a number of things that you're doing. Okay? You're young, and so what happens we tell people, there's a couple of tried and true approaches to save for retirement. Okay? What are some ways that people should start saving? Why should she start saving for retirement? So she's never been in the plan. Why should she start saving now? Why? There's no answer. See, nobody knows. Okay? But, but what, what do we tell about saving for retirement? Why? Compounding. Okay. Compounding. Okay. She wanted eight. But but start early. Start, start, early. Yeah. start early. It's like it's like getting a raise. Yeah. When you get that when you get that match, it's like getting a raise. Yeah. Free money. It's like getting a raise, but also because probably it's your age you when you're in retirement. Okay. There's some three right here in front of me. Think about it. Okay. So here we are. Smartest thing you do is take advantage of the you know maximum. So, you, so here we go. Okay, what happens is you get, if you put in eight, if you're making thirty-one thousand two hundred a year and you put in three percent, that's eighteen dollars. Okay, with the match, that's twelve. The total contribution is thirty. But if you gave eighteen, but your pre-tax cost is fifteen thirty, because if you do the pre-tax, they don't tax you on it, so you get a hundred, you get ninety-six percent gain, ninety-six percent return. Go to PNC, go to any bank, and say, hey, that, that Paul that Wayne guy showed up, and I want to get a, I want to get a ninety-six percent return on my money. Okay, it's pretty amazing. Okay. This shows you the value of the company math for somebody making thirty thousand dollars per year, okay? And how, how it adds up, and they're putting in, uh, you know, they're, they're putting in three percent. So over time, when it becomes, you know, how it becomes. By the way, a little adage now, you know, you get better looking the more money you have, you know, the more money. You know how it's proved it? They they had people come in and do a survey, and they, you know, they had women rate all these guys, you know, and uh, and a little test in college, and so they all rated them, and then. They asked them to leave the room when they came back in. They had the pictures of the guys, but how much they made and what, how much they're worth. And the guys that had a lot of money and made a lot of money, and you know they got a lot better quicker than hurry. So you, that's think about that. So the fact of the matter is, and by the way, how many are single? How many people are single? Okay. There's a paradigm shift in dating. Now. Seriously, the paradigm shift is this: I'll show you my 401k, you show me your 401k. Seriously, I hear people talk about that all the time. So you start to hear that. So. You're going to be thinking about contributing, but I mean, if you believe you're going to get to retirement age, you're going to say, where's the money going to come from? So it's imperative that you start start saving. At least, you know, it gets back to what Dave said, at least take advantage of the match. Take advantage of the match. And this shows you what it's worth every time. Okay? Now we get that contribution change form, which is on your desk right here. And all you got to do is you, 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 you get to change it, okay? At least maximize the match. It says you're going to change from what percent to whatever percent. Okay? I also have enrollment form for people not enrolled. But the fact of the matter is, Everybody says, Wayne, I really enjoyed your talk. Okay, but did you do, did you make any decisions? Because we need people to, to get serious about it. Look, I ran, this, I ran into a lot of people, and the other day, this woman told me she was underfunded. She was 57, she had $9,000 saved, and she was sick. She says, I'm in real trouble, but I have a plan. So I said, she, instead of doing the 1% increase per year that we recommend, she said, you know, she was also 57. She said, my husband's got some money saved, but it probably won't be enough. So I'm going to increase by 1% per month, per month, okay? Now, if you look on your sheet here, as far as when you can actually uh, increase, you can change each increase at the beginning of paper. But 
So she's religiously been increasing by 1% per month because she knows she's way behind. She's trying to get the 24% of her pay going in there. She knows if she does it gradually, she can do it. But at the end of the day, when you're broke, I mean, you know, you have to ask who's going to help you out when you're broke. We ran into a friend of ours is, is 60 years old and has a small retirement coming in, but she had a stroke. She has no money. And so she's in real trouble because she may have to become a ward of the state. Okay? So you want to make sure you can you save money. So you fill out that form and just make the change. And then Tom, it goes to you, right? It goes yeah. to payroll. Okay, okay. So that, that should. So put at least 3% or more in the plan. That's what you got to do. Okay? Oh, yeah, here we go. This is serious stuff. We're about moving in with kids. It's really serious. Now, if you think that it's funny, what you should do is close your eyes. Think about Christmas, New Year's, and Thanksgiving. How'd it go? Okay? <laughs> and it's coming up. I know it's going to get nervous. Okay? So what happens is this is a serious discussion that more and more people are having because it's hurt his, his issue. All of you that were born between 1946 and 1964, it turns out 50% of you will be broke other than Social Security by the time you're 75. That's the stats. Okay? So it's very troubling. So then who are you going to call? I know the younger people say you call Ghostbusters, but we're not going to. But who are you going to call? So this is it. Okay? They've got the, the calculator there, so it's over. Okay? He mentioned compounding, which is your great friend. Compounding is really, really great friend. This shows you how a ten thousand dollar investment works. Okay, at four percent, six percent, ten percent. Now, um, how many people want to make money in the market? Okay. Uh, we all know. How many people want to lose money in the market? Okay. I get this for you. Sometimes you're going to lose money in the market. Okay, but I can set it up so you never, ever, ever lose. But then I can set if you, I set you up that way, you'll never, ever, ever retire because you won't make any money. Okay, so you're going to take some risk in the market. So at four percent, I know a lot of people get about four percent, but they don't, you know, they can't retire a long time because they start to run out of money. But just at ten thousand dollars after twenty years, four percent goes to grows to twenty one thousand. Okay, if you get six percent of your money, it grows to thirty two thousand. And if you can get eight percent of your money, okay, it's like forty six thousand. Historically, the market average is really close to eight percent. Okay, and the market drives itself crazy, but it just shows you that the higher rate of return you get, is pretty amazing. Now, if you look at this, a hundred dollars a month. Okay, now let's say. Um, Let's say the, the two of you, okay, you came in together, you start, you work here for 40 years, okay? And I don't know who's more conservative, but who's ever the most conservative gets 7% on their investment. So after 40 years, you have 264,000. And if you get, one of you gets 9%, you have 471,000, you have $200,000 more. What gets you is you both put away $100 a month. Now conversely, if you put away $200 a month, which I hope that most people do at least, what happens is after 40 years, uh, whoever gets the 9% is close to having a million dollars. Whoever does the 7% has about half a million. Because the 2% difference in the rate of return makes a big, big, big difference. So compounding is really a friend. And you know, 20 years now, you'd be looking at say, you know, it was this bald-headed guy that showed up. And he said, we have, to have a lot more money. But after 20 years, you don't have what I would call a lot of money saved. But then it explodes. The next 20 years, you have to end up with $400,000 more to get 9%. That's what. That's why he says compounding is your friend. It truly is your friend, especially over time. It kind of explodes like a big, huge ski slope. So think about that. And if somebody could actually get twelve percent, you can end up with like a million dollars. Okay. And so that's that's a really big deal. Okay. So now we're going to talk about the four hundred one k and the Roth. Anybody have a Roth investment on the outside? Anybody have Roth on the outside? Okay. So, but this is kind of embedded in here, and it really depends on what you think you're going to be in the higher income tax bracket. When you go in here and you look at this, it says choose between the traditional and the Roth 401k. And so this, this, on this paper here, um, on this paper, let's see. Okay. On this paper, it'll tell you about the Roth. Okay. I'll tell you what the Roth is. Sure. And the Roth is, if you think you're going to be in a higher income tax bracket, I think we're all going to be in a higher income tax bracket. Okay? But, I, but I'm not sure how it impacts you. So we'll kind of go from here. But you get the Roth calculator and you get the little sheet. So the sheet right there is what I handed out where it says choosing between the traditional and the Roth. Okay? So what the traditional is is where you put your money now. So everybody right now for the most part is putting money in the traditional. So it means you avoid the taxes. Okay? So if somebody's making thirty and they put three thousand dollars in, the government says, You made thirty thousand dollars, you put three thousand dollars in the traditional, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract three thousand dollars from your pay and only tax you in twenty seven thousand dollars. If you put it in the Roth, they're going to say, you made $30,000, you put $3,000 in the Roth, but we're still going to tax you in $30,000. However, all the money that you take out of that Roth when you retire is not taxable. All the money you take out of the Roth is not taxable. But the money you take out of the traditional, the surprise of surprises is going to be when the baby boomers start to retire in mass, 
and, then, and they're going to find out that all their 401k is taxable. If somebody walks away with half a million dollars, guess what? They'll get taxed on that as they take it out. And by the way, the government forces you to take money out when you're 70 and a half and you're retired. They force you to take your money out. And then they'll go reverse and say, I'm 70 years old. You still got to take it. We love you, but you got to take your money out. So that's, so that's kind of the thing. A so portion of the money. Not of course, all of it. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, they force you to, yeah, you know, don't say exactly what the percentage is. It's somewhere, it's probably around 3%, maybe 3 you know, a little bit around that. So you take out a portion of, of, of that money, but they force you to go ahead and do that. So one of the things is, how do you figure out what to do? Well, part of the thing is, if you think you're going to be in a higher income tax rate, then what you do is you go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to go put some money in the lot. Remember, all the money that comes in from Cardinal Aluminum and all the money that you put here to date is going to be taxable when you take it out down the road. And after you retire, you can take out as much as you want. But 70 and a half, they'll force you to take out a certain percentage and can bump you in a higher income tax bracket. If you think you're going to be in a lower income tax rate, you might consider pre-tax. If you're uncertain, you might consider both. Okay? So I said, how do you figure it out? You get to take a look at your, your tax status and current savings. So what you do, there's a little calculator out there that you've got there figured out. The trick for the calculator out there is it's actually going to ask you, what do you think your, your tax rate is going to be when you retire? Nobody knows. Like you might, you might say, I'm in a 25% tax right now. When I retire, I'm going to be in the 25, maybe be in the 15. But it will calculate for you based on, you know, the numbers you plug in, uh, what's going to be better for you. Okay. So it's really tricky to know. But it's a, it's a gift inside of the plan. And I would think about using the Roth. If you think about a Roth on the outside, I think about the Roth on the inside here because there's no income limits like there is on the outside. And so we talked about what Jim Mary talked about these class, but just give it a try. Now I'm going to talk about asset classes. So we've talked about this before, and it's pretty straightforward. We get stocks, bonds, and cash, right? So when you think about stocks, they're like, so stocks are like, you know, big, large companies or small companies, whatever. But stocks, companies issue stocks so they can help fund the kind of things that they want to do. Whereas people issue bonds to do things too, they're called IOUs. And then we get, right here, we get like the cash equivalents, which is you're not making much money these days in savings book or anything else because interest rates are so low. It's about to change here real soon, okay? So when you look at it, you know, stocks are the most risky, but also have the highest rate of return. We've talked about that a lot. And every, you know, everybody tells me they, they don't want to lose any money in the market. Nobody wants to lose money. Nobody ever come up and told me they want to lose as much money as possible. Everybody always wants to say, I want to make as much money as possible and not lose anything. Nobody wants to lose anything, but sometimes you actually do, okay? So, so stocks do have the, the highest risk, but also the highest performance. Bonds are next. And then cash, you know, for very low risk, but also very low performance. When you think about stocks, you get them like this. We've talked about this before. Growth stocks are those that have excellent prospects and just continue to grow over time. Value with things are unabated and out of favor. And a lot of times, what I've noticed now is a lot of these programs that pick, that pick stocks, they're, they're leaning more towards value now because we've had five or six years of really good growth. Now you see value is probably a lot more in play. And the blend is a combination of growth and value. And then we got large cap stocks. We've talked about that before. So that's like, like this Coca-Cola. Um, there are some large companies that in, in Google Kentucky, some very large ones. GE, Ford. Ford. Yep, GPS. <coughs> yeah. So those are large companies. Did you hear, by the way, did you hear uh, uh, UPS and FedEx and Murphy? True. There's some companies are going to call it fed up. So. <laughs> no, 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 but, but, but the fact of the matter is, those are very, very large companies. Small companies. Okay, let me tell you some small companies. So small company, <coughs> so small companies would be like Crocs, Cracker Barrels, and Charlie's, Pet Boys. Middle-sized companies would be like Burger King, Wendy's, those three, and Pete and Papa John's. Okay. And global international. There's a reason why you'd have that because a lot of stuff is happening overseas, so they buy stuff overseas. Is what, is what they do. Well, global is really includes the United States, and it actually includes everything outside the United States. So you got the different kinds of bonds, okay? So when you look on your little sheet here on the front, we would like to tell you that you're, you you pick a bond fund, funds, or you got three different bond funds to pick from, okay? And so you have a real mix of bonds, but the fact of the matter is they're like IOUs, and they are truly more stable. Okay? And interest rates do change it, but since they're mutual funds, they buy lots and lots of different kind of bonds out there. That's what they do. And then cash equivalents, 
says minimal price fluctuation. That's so true. Okay, and then short, <coughs> short term and very liquid investments, uh, low risk and low potential return for reward. A lot of people have their money there, but you can't fund retirement. There's a woman yesterday. She was uh, well, she, she was she was 35. She had half of her assets in cash, and she moved most of it out. And she said, "I'm not making any money, and I'm probably have to retire someday because that's the issue you run into when cash equivalent of money." So let's talk about your mutual funds. We have four different types of mutual funds. The bond funds we talked about, the stock funds, the money market. A balanced fund has stocks, bonds, and cash. An index fund is based on an index like the S&P 500, which is the 500 largest companies in America. And then you know, and then uh, you also uh, have the target date, have the target date funds here. And how many of you know what fund you're in? Anybody know what fund you're in? So we give you a couple of choices. One is the hands-off investor. So you really, so a lot of people say, Wayne, I don't feel com com comfortable making the kind of choices that I need to make. Okay, so we say, well, use the target date funds. Other people say, no, 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 I want to pick my own funds. So then you pick your individual funds to make it happen, that's how it works. Then right here, so if you get into the target date funds, you do it based on when you were born. It's pretty straightforward. So, and, and this is, how many UK fans in here? We've asked this before, how many UK fans? Don't be ashamed, raise your hand. Okay, thank you. So the guy in the back, Mr. Tom, okay? So this is called, Tom, for you, this is called the one and done approach, okay? So what that means is that, you know, when you, when you get, you're done, and the reason is they manage the money for you. And they get more conservative as you get older, and they rebalance it, and they pick it, pick everything that you need for, you, for your success, okay? And that's the thing. So it's already, let's say somebody's born between 1970 and 79, they pick the stocks and bonds for you, so it's already done. Because everybody says, I don't know what to pick. Well, the way to do it is you could just pick the one fund that you're all set. So I put the thing you know, on this look at the second, second sheet in the handout, I'll say. Hands off approach. It says it right there, so you shouldn't get confused about that. And then if you're born before 1950, uh, you can do the uh, you can do the 2010 fund, okay? <laughs> but see how it gets much more conservative as, with stocks, so it limits your exposure to stocks, but it does it automatically. Like when you fly an airplane, they manage the whole thing for you, okay? This kind of shows you what they call the glide path. And they actually manage the money. You know, when you finally get out to be age 90, I think they start keeping it at, or 95, they keep it at 20% stock. <coughs> so you can stay invested in this fund for, for a long time if you want. So, and a lot of people do it because they, they don't know what else to do. So, and it has everything that you can see right here. It has all this right here, okay? It's like a pre cake. You know, it's my wife's birthday. I make sure that if we get a cake, that my daughter's not in town, and she don't bake a cake, then we go buy a cake. You know why? Preserves the marriage. Preserves it. Okay. Anyway. Okay. So what happens is all the ingredients are in there. And so, no, no, you know, when you get a, when you get a cake that's already made, you know the ingredients are in there. Same thing here. You want to be successful. You want to retire. You're not saving any money because you don't know what to pick. So this, Tom and the committee put this in here so you wouldn't have to really think a lot about what funds to pick because they're already there for you. Okay. And it's called Target Date. And you can go do the research, but these are really highly rated funds. Okay, they're rated by a company called Moneystar. This is really a big deal. Okay, so I would tell you that you might want to think about that a little bit of everything. We see that they got quite a bit in international and emerging markets, and part of the reason for that is because what's happening overseas. Did, did anybody remember we talked last year maybe about India? And we asked you how many cars in India. Anybody remember how many cars are in India for a thousand people? A billion. Okay, this is the deal. Yeah, how many cars do we have in the United States per thousand people? Per thousand, how many cars? Anybody know? Take a wild guess. Probably a thousand. It's close to that. Actually, it's, it's about 809, so a little bit less than a thousand. How about India? Any thoughts on India? You'd be shocked. Ten. Ten. So that's one car per hundred, okay? And so why do I mention it? So these funds go out and they invest in the companies that are making the cars, that are feeding the car companies, et cetera. So but they do the research for you. If you pick any of these other funds, you get to kind of do your own research. But if you just do the, the target date funds, it's pretty straightforward on what, you, on what you need to do. So it's set up, you know, so it's no need to mix and match, professionally diversified, professionally managed, rebalanced, everything else. And stock exposure, okay? But they, they kind of get stocks, they buy stocks from all over the world. And they're really a fund of funds, so they're other T world price funds. But they manage the money for you. Now, a lot of people say, hey, you know, this really gives me peace of mind, because I don't know what I'm doing. And at least I'm in a program that, they, that they're going to watch for me. Look, you all work together, and, and don't point at anybody, but does anybody here procrastinate? Okay. They, 
they, they, they don't they don't procrastinate, okay? They do what they're supposed to do, and they automatically rebalance, which means the market's really good, and your stock is worth about uh, is about eighty percent of your portfolio. It's supposed to be like sixty something. They automatically keep it in line where it's supposed to be. That's that's what they do. The other one is hands on when you pick them. This is pretty straightforward, okay? I call this the John Calipari approach, and the reason I do is because when he took over the University of Kentucky, he got rid of all the players that were there and picked his own. He really laid it out. Okay. And so we have this little thing, this little sheet here, you know, that you can find out there uh, on the web, and go ahead and, um, you know, go ahead and actually uh, fill it out, and it'll help you figure out where, where to put your assets. So a lot of great stuff actually out on the web there. Okay. Like that. So that'll help you. And when you get that, it'll say, okay, I got a score. For there's 13 questions and you get a score. My score was like 30, so it said I need to be about 32% large stocks. And what it is is just trying to take a look at the kind of risk that you're going to take. And there's no right or wrong score, et cetera. So it's one of those, just one of those things that you know, you've got to think about doing, but it will help you pick the funds that you want to take. The, wor the worst thing you can do is not be in the plan. The second worst thing you can do is if you're in the plan, you know, not put enough to maximize the match. And the third thing is not saving enough for retirement. So this will help you pick the funds that you actually uh, need to pick. Okay, we kind of put them, okay, we kind of put them there by uh, by category. So if you look at this, you say, okay, I got it. Okay, uh, I got the different categories. So it says large cap. It shows the large cap, small cap, mid cap. Show you the bonds and show you everything that you actually need, and you probably can put them in that in that particular thing. And so this will be the cash. This you get two stable value funds, the cash, the bonds, and these are okay. And then two international funds. Okay. By the way, international funds are a little bit different because sometimes one will maybe be a little bit more exposure to Europe, and the other one will be maybe a little bit more exposure to Asia. And then you get a balance and lifestyle fund. This conservative fund, it stays pretty much the same. It's about forty-five percent stock. It's for people who are my age, and I'm way up there. Okay, as far as age goes, so it's for people my age. This one's closer to like uh, sixty to sixty to two-thirds percent stock. Okay, so it's very very different. But you have to decide if you want to do that. Take that approach. You're not going to make as much money, but when the market goes down, you're not going to lose as much either. But it's a whole lot better being one of those than being in cash. So if you don't like to target any funds, you say, well, then you'll just pick a balance fund. This balance fund's been around a long time. It's the bluest of blue chips. You could you could put some of it in there and invest the rest, or you could say, I'm not going to put 100 percent in there. Usually the average is close to six and a half to seven percent per year. So it's pretty solid to be, you know, you don't anybody remember the, we talked one time about the rule of 72, the rate of return you're getting. Remember that? If you get a rate of return of like eight percent, who wants to take the W money? Okay, okay it, takes, it takes nine years because you divide whatever the rate of return is. Let me show you the rate of return. Yeah, it, um, it shows you the rate of return. Um, I'll show you in a minute. But tell you how long you've been having W money because that's a big deal. So these are these are large cap funds. And these are mid cap here, and these are the value side. You see, more and more people go towards value. I ran a one piece of software yesterday for somebody and it put her basically all in value, okay, just because we see growth has done really, really well for a while. You got three great growth funds, you got really uh, great value funds. You also got blended funds. What blended funds are, they're a combination of both. If you want to perform as well as the market, you can put some money in the Federated Max Cap, which is basically like on the S&P 500, the 500 largest companies, or you can put a bunch in the, uh, you can put some in the Federated Mid Cap, which is the 400 largest middle-sized companies, or however you want to split it up. I'm going to make sure you have to buy one from each row, one from each column, unless you do the middles, you can go for it. But this, this kind of tells you how to, how to do it, okay? And these are, um, okay, this, tells you, this tells you right here, okay, how well things are performing, okay? Now, how many people are basketball fans? This is Kentucky, so a lot of people are basketball fans. Okay, so if you're a sports fan or something, okay, if you think, if you look at 2005, 06, 07, that emerging markets return 34.5% in one year, 32.6% the next year, and then in 2007, they returned 39.8%. And then 08, remember, was a really, really bad year in the market, so the bottom fell out. So it dropped, and it lost 53%. And then next year, it went back up 79%. So you want to make sure if you're picking your own, you totally diversify. And so what happens is it tells you why you want to diversify. You pick your favorite color. And sometimes your favorite color may be at the bottom, sometimes it may be at the top, sometimes it's in between. Because nobody can tell you how each sector is going to perform. Okay? So through the third quarter of this year, mid-cap growth was leading, but everything was basically negative for the year okay, so far. Now, how many, get, how many of you get your statement from, 
from PNC for your 401 k How many people are really not happy with their statements? Okay. If you're not happy with the money you made, you need to go run the numbers again. And if you run them from October, just run from October through now, you'll see that you get most of the money you've lost back. Okay. And for, for the most part, uh, everybody's up pretty much now for the year. Just not a whole lot, but a little bit. Because some years are better than others, and this shows you why you, you know, why you split up your assets. Okay. And here's the other thing. The, the S&P 500 is the 500 largest uh, stocks actually out there. This tracks how well they did by decade. And let me tell you what. Everybody likes this because it's brand name things. It's the Monsanto, it's the Procter & Gamble, the Microsoft, the Boeing, all that stuff. They like that, but some, some years, some um, decades are better than others. For example, the 80s took 17.5, the 90s, 18.2. But then, from January 1st, from the YCK started, from January 1st, 2000 through 2009, Negative 1%, negative 1%. And then it's been 12.2% since, um, you know, since 2010. So that's what, another reason why you split up sectors, because you never know how the sector is going to perform. Okay. These are your numbers. You can take a look at your numbers. You can see them there. You can see them here. I'm colored line, so I have no idea how these colors look to you. I have no idea. But I do know this. It goes back to the rule of 72 if I see this. So, you know. I've seen this one, this barren asset fund, since inception, 11% per year since inception. That's since inception. So you divide 11 into 72, you stay away, you get about six and a half maybe. But every six and a half years, you double your money, okay? And so you kind of look at this and say, I like these results. And by the way, I put the fund symbol here, which is right there, the second column. So you can see that you go out there and Google it, et cetera, because just like you all have the Social Security, this is the, the symbol is the unique identifier of all these funds. And people get paid to manage these funds. And, and the reason we know we get paid, you have this operating expense right there. The top one says that a place adjusted bond is 0.72 or, or 720 out of every thousand dollars, okay? What that's telling you is that you're paying them to manage your money, okay, in that particular fund, okay? Same way down here at the bottom of the T-Rex price, like the 2050, you're paying them $12.50 per thousand to manage the funds. And you may say, well, they lost money from it. Sometimes funds are going to lose money because they're all subject to the market. Okay, that's kind of the way that it actually goes. But, but over time, they do quite, make quite a bit of money for it. Like, I look at this, this 2050 fund over time has made 9.22% uh, you know, uh, over the last five years. So you say, yeah, that's, you know, that's pretty good. And it's hard, to, it's hard to bet against the market. So it's probably better to have somebody manage the money for you. But when you see operating expenses, that's what it is. And I don't care who you are, you're going to pay an operating expense, but you know, for fund managers, that's just the way that it actually works out. So, um, any questions on the, on the funds themselves? So let's talk about some resources and we're going to wrap up, okay? So, you get some resources out here, and how many of, anybody download the smart app, the, the mobile application? Okay, yeah, so what happens is, it keeps your, uh, you put it on your smartphone, and it's called the PNC uh, Retirement Directions Mobile Application. You love your smartphone so you can always see what your balance is, what your contributions are, everything else. You can't make any moves with it, but you can actually take a look, you can actually see it. So that's kind of how that that's kind of how that works. And you can always call this number, 8 3 4 6 3 7 excuse me, 4 6 3 1, um, from the hours of 8 to 10 Eastern time. Okay, we can call it. So that being the case, you can also go on the web and find all kinds of fun fact sheets about every one of these things. Anybody take a vacation this year? Anybody take a vacation? Did you plan it? Was it planned? Yeah. Okay. Um, so how long are you on? Seven days, ten days? Yeah, seven. Okay. So most people spend six months to a year planning a seven to ten day vacation. I got news for you. Your retirement is going to be the longest vacation you ever had. So you got to really plan that. So they're serious. I know one was on vacation for 35 years. I'm ready for it. Yeah. Everybody's ready for it. But can you afford it? I mean, that's the issue. I mean, I'm just really concerned that people can't, you know, not going to be able to afford it. But you can go out here and do, check your funds out, okay? So if you're going to do the target eight funds, you, you know you pick the one based on your age. If you're going to do the research, you go out here and get the fund fact sheets, okay? You also get this education center, okay? And so when I take a look at the education center, there's a couple things that actually, you know, that actually jump, jump out at me. Number one, you get borrowing from the 401k at the top, okay? So, you know, it talks, it talks about loans. We say just be real careful about loans. So you can, you can run the, the analysis and see whether it really works for you, okay? Whether it's a smart move or a bad move, it will tell you. Now, the cost of waiting, we had a situation, 
I know the city that this woman was really upset. She came in one night, oh, one morning, and she said, you know, I'm just really upset. Why? She said, because last night my husband told me that his money was his money, and my money is my money. And she said, you know, he's a very wealthy guy. Was that him? Very wealthy guy. I said, well, that's really sad. She said, yeah, so I'm going to be a millionaire when I retire. Now, thankfully, she was 25. So we ran the number across passed the waiting and found out that she got 7% per year. She saved 47 87 per year. And get 7%, she could become a millionaire in, in four years when she was 65. But she was, I, I don't know the marriage is still going on and off yet, but the, the fact of the matter is that you all know you're going to retire. You all know you're going to get older. So you got to say, how much money do you want between now and then? You can just plug in the figure and the cost of waiting and we'll tell you exactly how much money you need to save per year to hit your target. Because I can look at the numbers, Tom looks at the numbers, and we know that people are behind as far as saving for retirement. People are really, really behind. And what happens is, you know, you don't, you can't turn back the hands of time. And so you got to go with what you got now. And I think back to the woman that did the 1% per month, I was just doing the 1% per month. I think back to other people, that was 47, his wife died suddenly. And, uh, uh, he realized he had my money saved up uh, after you know her care and everything, uh, or after the funeral. And so he decided to put three percent per year away until he finally got to twenty four percent, and then he finished it. And then uh, ended up at twenty four percent. Said I can't do anymore. So you do what you got to do. So think about it. Okay. So that's the mobile app. We've talked about that. It tells you all the stuff that's there, but it's, it's pretty powerful. Okay. And I think you should, should do it. But you all aren't thinking about retirement. And I, I get really nervous about it from the PNC perspective because. I know what happens when people don't have money if they, they get in a very, very bad, uh, bad situation. You also, if you want to go ahead, you can go open up a, a squab account to manage your own money. This is, this is for the sophisticated and savvy investors. Like when I retired from Hewlett Packard, okay, I opened up my own, uh, my own brokerage account um, because I feel very comfortable in the market. Other people don't, but it's actually out there. that tells you the cost, and I can go over that whole I just want to mention that to you. Okay. So these are the stats, okay? Okay, 25% of the people are actually going to be living, okay, with relatives. So, if you, like I said, if you think it's a good idea, just think about how, how it went during the holidays, okay? My son's a detective in another city. He hates the holidays because people that know each other, that love each other, shoot each other, okay? He's a detective, he don't like that. And it's totally, okay? For a lot of people on charity welfare, a lot of people on new program, bipartisan committee can announce any day, WPD works your job. Certainly. I bet you every week I hear somebody say, Wayne, I'm underfunded, I'm going to work for a truck. Okay? So that's why I'm kind of on this crusade. He said, make sure you increase by at least 1%. You know? Right now, you can do it. That's why you hand out the form. Okay? And you guys should have enough to meet your needs because it's a very, because it's a generous match. Take advantage of the match. Okay? And so at least put in 3%, and then each year thereafter, it will be additional one okay? okay? So let's just summarize. So the 401k is basically your vehicle to invest. Okay? Compounding returns is a very, very powerful way to go ahead and build wealth. But take advantage of the match. Decide whether you're going to do Roth or traditional. I don't know what's better for you. You have to run the calculators out there. And then save as much as you can in the rolling plan. And again, you mentioned the match. But get real serious about it. If you can do the hands off, you know, all you're going to do is take a look at the sheet. So I'm going to do the hands off, and I'm going to do one of the two-row price. That's appropriate for my age. If you do the hands on, you just go ahead and pick them from here. Go to the website and actually do the research. Okay? So we say start now and stay regular and stay the course because these will change. So we'll open up for questions or whatever else, but uh, fill out the, fill out the uh, contribution change form. Okay, just fill out. Questions? Anyone? A general statement. Uh, we do have some people who have been here for a very short period of time in the room, and we've got a couple people on the outside who may be short term as well. The way you get into the 401k plan here at Cardinal, in, in the picture. Uh, you have to be an employee of Cardinal for 12 consecutive months. You have to be, you have to work, in those 12 months you have to work at least a thousand hours. And then on the following, after the 12 months, the following either September 1st or March 1st, September 1st being the first day of our plan year, March 1st being the midpoint of the plan year, then you can enter the 401k plan. Up until that point, you're actually not in the plan. But at that point, then you go into the plan, then you can start saving. I typically will send out an email to you to let you know that you're going to become an interest, or sometimes I'm a little bit late, but you just became an interest. Then you have to see the payroll department and fill out these forms.
to begin your contributions and you have to get online to check where you want your investments to go. I think we have a form for that that can be turned in, but it's actually better for you to do it. You can do it online. So when you become eligible, if you're not eligible, or if you are currently already eligible and you do not know what your PIN number is, you should find that out. And you need your PIN number in order to log on to the website. Okay, and you also need your PIN number to be able to talk to the people at the 800 number that Wayne showed you before. So if you don't know what your PIN number is now, go ahead and get that if you're in the plan. Once you become eligible, get your PIN number, your password, so that you can go online. You can make changes to your plan online pretty much as frequently, frequently as you want type of thing, but there are a couple of the plans, if you get into them, you must keep your monies into that plan for a certain number of days. If you don't, one of them is 90 days, but it's on the bottom yeah. of one of the uh, handouts that's out there. Uh, if you don't, then there are some short-term penalties for that. You just need to be aware of all those things. It's not my responsibility to tell you about that. You need to do your own investigation. Be active, contribute in the plan, have a happy retirement whenever you come to that retirement point type of thing. Don't live with your relatives. Probably not a good thing. Uh, if you need investment advice, if you don't feel comfortable and you want someone to work with you directly on your 401k with you, personal investor, there's a guy by the, at PNC by the name of Matt Petty, and he will be happy to make an appointment with you, and you can go talk to him, and he will guide you. He will talk about your personal situation, what it is in your life, where you are with your life, where you are with your savings, and he will help you one-on-one -on -one at no charge. I cannot do that. I cannot give you any investment and guidance whatsoever because I'm on the 401k committee. It's against the law for me to do that. Okay, I could tell you what I'm doing, but I can't tell you what you should do. Okay, so you need to look into that on your own. This is your responsibility. The company wants you to invest monies in the 401k. We want you to retire happy and peacefully. We want to make that match on your behalf because you're an employee of Cardinal. You deserve it. If you don't do it, you're losing money. Flat out, it's a freebie once you're in the plan, so at least do the match portion. Any questions about what I was talking about? This is the number for the card, I mean, the number to call. And so, the first, if you've never logged in before, when you're eligible, it's your search card number. Run the dash is your favor. Okay, you can become the first time to this. It takes you a while, it takes about 13 minutes to get authenticated. Okay, all right. All right, thank you guys, everybody, for your support. Thanks.